Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so um, I'm going to start the presentation with a quick introduction on homomorphic encryption. Um, I will also present, of course, uh, the scheme Hian we improved, then is bootstrapping. And uh, I will show you the improvement we did, and I will try to finish with um, implementation results and uh, open, open and future works. So since we're talking about homomorphic encryption, what is homomorphic encryption? So it's a family of encryption scheme that allows us to perform uh, uh, computation on encrypted messages without the needing to decrypt or to know any, any secret. So in the general case, imagine that we have uh, two uh, messages encrypted. And in this slide, the encryption is represented by the green box. What we would like to do is to add those two ciphertexts homomorphically or multiply them homomorphically. And we would like to retrieve as a result uh, the sum a ciphertext encrypting the addition of the original messages or uh, their multiplication. Homomorphic encryption is very interesting, mainly because of the large amount of application in, uh, it can solve. Uh, we can think about um, electronic voting or uh, uh, any kind of uh, operation on sensitive data, such as um, medical data, uh, genomic data, financial data, etc. So homomorphic ciphertext um, have uh, contain uh, some noise that at the beginning is very small when we encrypt them. The problem is that every time we perform a computation, which is an addition or mainly multiplications, this noise starts growing. And if it reaches a certain amount after a certain number of operation, if we don't control this noise, the ciphertext will not decrypt in a correct way. So in this case, we have a limit on the number of operations we can perform, and we talk about level homomorphic encryption. So this limit will be imposed by the, parameter, by the parameters of the schema, and in case we would like to um, evaluate larger computations, we just need to increase the parameters. So this noise problem was solved in 2009 by Craig Gentry. Uh, that proposed a technique called bootstrapping, which manages the noise growth by evaluating, uh, homomorphically evaluating the decryption circuit. So thanks to te this technique, we were able to um, have a fully homomorphic encryption, so to potentially evaluate any possible function. But the problem of bootstrapping is that it's a very expensive operation. So the work that followed the one by Gentry um, tried to, uh, of course, propose uh, new schemes but also to improve this bootstrapping technique. And the work we, we do is going to do uh, the same. So we have um, uh, the scheme I, I will talk about, Hian, is a LWE-based scheme. Uh, these are some of the LWE-based schemes that we have in literature. All of them have multiple variants. And uh, Hian, uh, many of them have uh, also an implementation that comes with. And the schema Hian, which is the last one in the list, is one of the newest scheme proposed. So it was proposed in 2017 uh, by Cheon et al. And in 2018, it was improved by, uh, with the bootstrapping. So it's also implemented, and the, the implementation is in open source on GitHub. So what we did in this paper was to study in detail the schema Hian, his bootstrapping, of course, and uh, to improve the bootstrapping. And uh, the technique we used to improve the bootstrapping could be also used to improve other homomorphic computations. So uh, Hian is a shortcut for uh, homomorphic encryption for arithmetic of approximate numbers. So as I said, in the homomorphic ciphertext, we have uh, some noise, which is contained. And in the case of Hian, the noise is considered as a part of the error that is generated during the homomorphic computations. So the scheme is proposed in the beginning as a level scheme, so it can support a certain amount of uh, multiplications. Um, the ciphertext at level L is expressed with respect to a ciphertext modulus QL, and the message encrypted is very small with respect to this modulus. And what is important to know is that the decryption is just an inner product between the ciphertext the secret, and the secret key, then reduce modulus this ciphertext modulo. So the result of this decryption will be the message plus the error. But since in a hand the error is part of the uh, computational error, we can say that it's just an approximation of the message. 
So the scheme is leveled, as I said, so we can uh, uh, perform a just a certain amount of multiplication because each multiplication consumes a level. So after L levels, we have to stop. Uh, the schemes encode the complex rounded plain text, and in particular, it can support, like many other homomorphic schemes, uh, a packing technique. So to pack together multiple of these messages and to perform a batched computations. So I will call the polynomial representation the coef representation and the slot representation on the complex number the slot representation. So as I said before, the bootstrapping uh, wants to refresh noisy ciphertext by evaluating the homomorphic, uh, homomorphically the decryption circuit. In EANO, we will as well evaluate the uh, homomorphically the decryption circuit, but the goal will not be to reduce the noise, but just to have, again, new levels to perform a proper homomorphic computations. So the homomorphic decryption, the homomorphic circuit for Hean, as I said just a few minutes ago, is an inner product between the ciphertext and the secret key, reduce modulo Q. So if we don't reduce modulo Q, what we retrieve as a result of this inner product is an addition between the message and Q multiplied by a factor E. Uh, so the idea of the bootstrapping is the following one. Let's try to see the ciphertext on a larger modulus, big Q. So the decryption will just consist in a modular reduction uh, in order to obtain, again, an encryption of the, of the message M. So in order to evaluate the modular reduction, we, we will evaluate uh, an, a function that approximates this modular reduction. And this function has to be uh, close to the identity nearby zero and uh, Q uh, periodic in order to approximate correctly. So in the original paper, the authors proposed to evaluate the scaled sign function, which is represented uh, by this figure in my slide that I, take from the, that I took from, the, uh, from their bootstrapping paper. And uh, the function, the formula is uh, on the bottom. OK, so um, just to summarize the bootstrapping steps, uh, we start from uh, a low-level ciphertext uh, uh, encrypting the message M. As I say, we will go up to a larger level that I will call QL from now on. On this higher level, the same ciphertext will encrypt not only the message, but the message plus Q times E. And we would like to evaluate the modular reduction. So since the ciphertext encode multiple messages, uh, packs multiple messages together, we will start by evaluating a coef to slot uh, operation, which um, goes from the coefficient, so from the polynomial representation to the slot representation. We will then evaluate the sine uh, function, which is an approximation of the modular reduction. And then we will finish by coming back to, this, to the coefficient representation. So the idea is that if we choose the parameters in a proper way, the arriving level Q little l will be larger than the original little Q. So this will allow us to um, have more levels left to perform a proper homomorphic computations. OK, so um, how does it work, the, the sign evaluation in the original paper? So what they do is they perform it, in, perform it in two steps. They start by evaluating the um, scaled exponential function, and then they retrieve the sine function by just extracting the imaginary part. So in order to perform this uh, uh, in an efficient way, in particular the exponential evaluation, they do it in two steps. They start by evaluating a low degree Taylor polynomial uh, of degree, a low degree D0 that approximates the exponential uh, in a precise way on a very small range. And then they obtain the, the desired precision on the larger range by doing uh, repeated squaring. So the total, the total degree of the polynomial they evaluate is the product between D0 and uh, 2 to the power of R, which is uh, in their case about 1,000. So in our work, we decided to take a different approach. Instead of passing through the exponential, we go straight on the sine evaluation. And we approximate the sine evaluation by using the Chebyshev interpolant. So the Chebyshev interpolant is represented by the formula in the slide. 
and it's uh, just a linear combination of uh, Chebyshev polynomials, uh, which are um, uh, which are recursively computed polynomials on the ciphertext, and they are multiplied by those uh, coefficients, which can be pre-computed. So why using Chebyshev instead of the previous technique? Um, mainly because we can have a, a better precision by consuming less levels. So to give you um, practical numbers, if in a hand they needed a polynomial of degree about 1,000, in our case we need a polynomial of degree about 100. And uh, in order to be able to evaluate this Chebyshev interpolant uh, efficiently, we decided to use a modified version of the patterson stock uh, algorithm mixed together with uh, the baby step giant step technique that need to be um, adapted for the Chebyshev setting. So we are able to evaluate this polynomial in about square root of the uh, non-trivial multiplication between ciphertexts. So the second improvement uh, we have is in the linear transforms. So coef to slot and slot to coef are linear transforms. And they are performed on every bootstrapping. And they are the most costly part of the entire evaluation. So we observe that the linear transforms can be computed as, uh, um, with FFT looking like algorithms, which are composed by multiple levels. And in every level, we have uh, a certain number of rotation and scalar multiplication. Uh, so each level in practice is evaluating all together, batched together, multiple butterfly operations. So in, uh, in the slide, uh, as you can see in the blue box, uh, I represented this linear transformation. So we have uh, K levels. Uh, and in every level, we have two rotations, a rotation on the left, a rotation on the right, and three scalar multiplications of the ciphertext times A, I, B, I, C, I. So levels are very important in homomorphic encryption. So if we can consume less level, it will be better because those levels will be used later on proper homomorphic operations. So an easy idea to reduce this uh, uh, these levels is to collapse together uh, some of those levels. As instance, in my example, if I collapse together two levels into one, so I will take vi plus one and vi, I will express vi plus one in terms of vi minus one, so instead of having k levels, I will have k over two levels, so the alpha, but the problem is that the complexity starts increasing because instead of having four rotations, I have now six, and instead of having six multiplications, I have now seven. So, of course, there exist two extremes. The, all the levels are evaluated and the complexity is really, really small, or I reduce all the level, collapsing them in a single one, and the complexity will be very large. So we try, of course, to find a trade-off in order to have a better um, evaluation. And in order to do that, we decided to use some dynamic programming that helped us decide the collapsing uh, strategy and also the collapsing point. So in the, in the image I show in the slide, uh, you have on the horizontal axis the consumed level that we decide to use. In the vertical axis, the corresponding complexity. And you can see that if we decide to collapse everything on a single level, the complexity will grow very fast. And every time we decide to use, to, uh, use one more level, complexity is reduced. OK, um, so those are the improvements. We try, of course, to implement all this stuff in order to see what was the practical impact of these improvements on the, on the bootstrapping. So we compare our results with two other results. Of course, the original Hean bootstrapping paper proposed in 2018 that I will call in the following Hean boot. And uh, in the meantime, this uh, Hean bootstrapping has been, uh, has been improved by the, by the authors in an implementation. And I will call this improved implementation Hean boot plus. So we implemented our code on Hean boot plus, and we tested it on a common laptop. So I will present you two implementation results um, on 
two different parameter sets. Uh, the first one is this one. On the higher part, you can see the Hian bootstrap original results and the improved results by the implementation, and then uh, our results. So uh, if you check the linear transform uh, column, uh, you can see that in here we have a huge improvement in terms of timing. And this improvement is even more evident when you go uh, watching the amortized timing. Uh, uh, the amortized timing. So amortized timing means the timing for the bootstrapping for a single slot. Remember that every ciphertext encrypts multiple slots, multiple messages. So in here we can see that we have uh, at least a, a factor 5, 10 of uh, improvement compared to the original improved implementation. And uh, even better, uh, on a larger uh, uh, parameter set, we can observe that the improvement on the amortized time in this case is even more impressive. So of course we are using larger amount of slots compared to the original uh, Hian. This is because thanks to the fact that we're using this FFT-like algorithms, we are able to manage in a better way the complexity. So we were able to go on more larger amount of slots. Okay, I will conclude by summarizing what we saw in, in this presentation. So, uh, as I said, we improved the Hian bootstrapping. In particular, we improved the two parts of the Hian bootstrapping, the sign evaluation, and also the linear transform, so coefficient to slot and slot to coef. And uh, I show you some implementation results, which prove that our improvements are concrete. Um, about future work, as I said in the beginning, the techniques we proposed uh, are not used only to improve uh, the bootstrapping, but can be used to improve other homomorphic operations. In particular, Chebyshev interpolant could be used as instance to uh, improve uh, some functions, such as the sigmoid function or the ReLU functions, which are largely used in machine learning over encrypted data. Uh, the same improvements we propose for the, for the uh, linear transformer could be also used uh, to improve the evaluation of the discrete Fourier transform on homomorphic uh, uh, data. And uh, an open work, which would be very interesting to check on, is to try to implement this new bootstrapping, improved bootstrapping, on the new RNS version of YAN, which has already proved to be more faster compared to the original implementation. So I think this is all I wanted to say. Thank you very much for your attention. Since Hilaria will use the microphone, then please walk to that mic. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> She's running out of mic. Uh, great work. I have uh, two questions regarding the linear transform um, improvement. Uh, the first question, there was a paper published a little bit later in the ePrint by the CL National University proposing an FFT-like technique. Have you had a chance to examine uh, both approaches, yours and the one that was proposed in that paper? Can and, you, you know, repeat the, the, the question? I, I, I lost you from the middle of the question. Sure, sure. Uh, there was another paper published uh, a little bit later in ePrint with an FFT-like technique and that was applied to here in bootstrapping mm -hmm. by the National Seoul University. I'm wondering if you've had a chance to compare uh, the two approaches, uh, the, compl uh, the complexity of two approaches, and are they very similar or you've seen some differences? Okay, so the, um, the paper was, I think, published on a print after our yes, yes. paper, so we didn't have the chance to compare it in, um, uh, in our paper. Um, from what I remember, they use a similar technique to improve the DFT. I think their main goal was to improve the DFT, so um, they didn't apply any of this technique on the bootstrapping. Um, uh, what else? The, the idea of for improving the DFT is similar, but I cannot tell you any, uh, precise, any more precise uh, information. Yes, sorry. Thank you. And I have another question yeah. also about the linear transform part. Um, it looks like the analysis uh, that was conducted on the number of levels used uh, assumes that all rotations basically take the same time 
there was a recent work in Crypto 18 uh, by Shai Halev and Victor Shub showing that you can use hoisting and certain rotations can be done much faster. Uh, did you consider that? Because it sounds to me the uh, analysis of linear transform versus FFT-like technique may slightly change and the choice of parameters if uh, uh, rotations are not treated equal, in other words, in terms of efficiency. Um, uh, we, can you repeat it again? Sure. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so th um, in the analysis of linear transform versus the FFT technique, yes. um, uh, I think the, your assumption was that all rotations uh, take uh, roughly the same time. Yes. But uh, sometimes you can use uh, the hoisting technique and have much faster rotations up to, for instance, one order of in magnitude. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that would, you know, I mean, have you considered applying hoisting technique, for instance, to, uh, um, uh, to improve uh, the linear transforms in your case? Uh, we didn't consider it in the paper, but I will surely take a look to, uh, I mean, it's a very interesting question, so I will, I will check it um, after this talk in the following. Yeah, thank you. So uh, you mentioned that uh, using R RNS residual number system uh, is a future work, but on the implementation slide, you said you're using numbers that are like thousand bits long. So what are you using for the long integer uh, arithmetic? Uh, we're using the same, uh, the same thing that they used in the original, uh, um, in the original implementation. So it's not RNS. So, so what is it? Is it, you know? Uh, I think it's large numbers. Uh, sorry? Oh, I think yes. Okay. Okay, thanks. Thank you. All right, so if there are no more questions, then that's thank